I have a violent allergy. Oh, no. I can't even watch it even though it's animated. No. Oh, hell no. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. Hey guys, it's your girl Aisha, aka GeekXXChic, and we are back with another reaction to Blue Eye Samurai. We're now into episode seven, which is called Nothing Broken. So the last episode was nuts. It was basically a grueling fight from beginning to end. Mizu finally made it to the castle. She had her way in. She managed to fight her way in, but it was literally one battle after another designed to either take her out or tire her out before she got to her objective. And thankfully the first objective did not happen, but the second one did. She got hurt. She ended up getting exposed to some kind of hallucinogen. She endured a lot of battering. And then she eventually found Tygen, who was of course severely injured. She couldn't leave him there. She tried to bring him along, but of course that took even more time and energy out of her. And then she eventually did get to the top of the tower. She met Fowler. Thank goodness discovered that she is not his daughter. But again, she wasn't able to even put a scratch on him. He was ready for her. He had a gun ready and she ended up getting injured yet again. And it was very clear to her after a while that there was no way she was gonna be able to defeat him and save Tygen and save herself. So we see that she made the very difficult decision of deciding to abandon, grab Tygen and jumped out of a ninth level window into the water. But looks like she survived, hopefully Tygen did too. But uh, we see she's in the frozen water, exhausted, and it looks like she might've been on the brink of drowning. But a figure showed up above her in the watery distance. We're not sure who that is, but she was hoping it was Ringo. I am too. Crazy episode. It was beautiful though, as usual, beautifully shot. Great, great story. Very much made me anticipate jumping into this episode. So without further ado, let's do that. But just before I do, a reminder, I do a lot of reactions here on this channel to all sorts of great stuff. And if you'd like to support me and be notified when I do more uploads, please go ahead and hit that subscribe button as well as the notification bell. And if you like this video, please show it some love with some thumbs up and comment below. All right, that out of the way, guys. Let's get into the episode right about now. Hello in there. It is Ringo. Bless him. I have dying people, or maybe they're already dead. I'm too scared to look, but I'm trying to save them. Facts. That clanging. I love that they always go back to that sound. Go inside. How did you find the sword father? Did she ever tell him about the sword father? Or was she just talking about him maybe in her sleep or delirium? Fuck 10,000 times. How are I you like not tired of just see it again. tossing yourself off every day, bro? Seriously, I would be so bored of the self-flagellation. I don't know how. I hope he still ends up going down, but I have a sneaking suspicion that's not happening this season. Our friends are nervous. Ah, let them be nervous. When they stop worrying, they stop thinking they need us. But... You do know when. I feel like he's bluffing, but does it matter at this point? Did not need this scene. Again, things I never needed to see. I could have gone my whole life never seeing that. Pleasure as always. Mm, I had a feeling it was her. Her kimono is very distinct. Our army will take the castle and I'll personally execute the Shogun and the entire Ito clan Do I need to know what's happening right now with this breathing? <sighs> Should I know? I didn't say stop. And I just know it's stink. <sighs> the shipment comes in two days. Mm -hmm. Scour every port and fish yard. Search every boat. You think he doesn't know you're about to betray him? Find those guns before they reach Edo. Bring them to me. Now. I'm glad at least Teiji recognizes that man will destroy everything, including him. Aw, poor birdies. Aw. I see the symbolism. How long have you been in there? Caged birds. You should look where you're going, hon. I knew it. I knew something was gonna happen. I just knew it. I'm sorry. That's horrible, but I knew it. I'm like, something tells me something's gonna happen to this bird. 
You have nothing to say for yourself? Why would he? Yeah, that's going to be your real villain right there. The man's a problem, but the women in these situations are the worst. His first wife wishes she followed it. What happened to her? Oh, she went back to her family. In an urn. He is as mm -hmm. ruthless in bed as in battle. Yeah, those are the two little cat. Those are the ones behind. But if they're trained by that Ito lady, they're probably worse. Sorry, Akemi. Hope you can run away again. I don't know. Honey, I promise you it's not it's not high enough. Heavens, child. Get away from that window. This is your ambition now? I mean, isn't that what you're basically giving her anyway? Sadly, I lack the courage. Go away. I don't need your advice on marriage or love or whatever you think you're an expert on today. When what you resent is being someone else's property. Women shouldn't be property. And also a little bit of you because you did sell her. I tried with the time I had to ready you for the world that is, not the world you'd have it be. Nothing changes with that. Ugh, I get where his heart is at. Still sucks though. I was no better a mother than I was a warrior. I did enjoy the job more. Hmm. Kids are cute at moments. Yeah, it's rough. I mean, I I agree with her annoyance, but I think he did the best of what he could. And again, he is a man in this society, so of course he's not thinking outside of that, and he can't fully understand what she's going through. But I mean, I think it's plain that he cares about her anyway. I'm not Mizu's apprentice. Okay. Sure you're not. Will Tygen live? Hmm. His soul is also stuck. I would say so, considering what he went through. If he survived that, he's surviving. <laughs> the legendary master AG deserves clean, white underwear. You can tell the man's underwear in public, sir. Some decorum. Hey, welcome back there, Baldy. You're alive. Ugh. Everything hurts. That means you're healing. That's a good sign. Yeah. Wait. You have to let me thank you for saving me. Oh. It's hard enough to admit you did. He's like, he's so cool. He'd want to be your bestie, but I think he's already half in love with you and doesn't understand why. <laughs> that wedding is your wedding? She really is a real princess. <laughs> oh, of course she is. Bet she lives in a castle. I do, actually. Is the woman who do voicing that sounds like Pam from Archer. We've been servicing the road weary crotches of every man here to pay God, road weary crotch is a horrible expression. That he's a beast? He's weak. He's a man. All men are weak. You better preach. The ones who act beastly are weakest. Period. Really? Their pricks are fragile. In the softest part. Exposed. You saw it yourself. Period. They want to be diapered, spanked, and breastfed. Then strut away like they conquered and So all. many bars. Be his strength. Mm -hmm. And he'll worship. Exactly. You. I hate to say it, but those kind of men are the ones you can bend to your will if you know what you're doing. I want to be in control of my life. Then take control, control of his. Of wow. Princess. Yep. This is what in a very roundabout and not as clear way, your uh, Seki was trying to tell you. That white man is going to kill her with the rest of them. You're a spy, I should have known. Broken is broken. Then it must be remelted and reforged. Your sword broke because the blend was wrong. It got shot. I have no steel for you. Mm. AKA he has no steel for you as you are. I'm not mad at this because at least now this gives her time to heal. <laughs> this is not an overnight project, so at least she's gonna have the time to heal up. Oh, is he gonna go look for his old friends? Because he said his dad's gone, right? So. <laughs> He's a much better, much better ears than Mizu. I want to be a samurai. I want to be great. Most people laugh when I tell them that. Is it funny? Yeah. My man's like, I have some potential in anybody. Do they? As a sword maker needs eyes. Hmm. 
¿Sí? ¿En accident o by birth? Birth. Oh. Of fire. Oh. I had a feeling he must have been able to see once before because she was describing colors to him. Oh no. Well, oh, there it is. Didn't smelt down. I'm thinking you need a hotter fire. You worked all night. Thought you might be hungry. Oh, we're bringing food now. Interesting. I never tried them before. Remember? I was just a dog who ate gutter scraps. You were mean. You're good. Maybe better than me. And no one is better than me. <laughs> the progress. Um, watch your robe, ma'am. Watch your robe. Fire. Back up. You're going to weird him out. I'm sorry. Don't be sorry, Tygen. Tygen? Uh, Maybe don't tell must him. Must be missing a gummy. <clears throat> really? Something popped up? I don't know if you should tell him. We'll never see a Kemi again. Okay. What? She's in Edo, marrying Takayoshi Ito. I have to go to Edo. No, it's too dangerous. Fowler is plotting an attack on Edo Castle. What? All the more reason he's gonna go now. The Shogun is in danger. A Kemi is in danger. What kind of samurai are you? I'm not a samurai. For hate. You really are a demon. Same thing. Damn. You came so far and then... Oh. I'm going to Edo to warn the Shogun. And then I'm going to find you and kill you. Okay. Well, that was your default anyway. He's here for your proven devotion to the Shogun. And the bride he is loyal... Oh, no. Of course. Of course. He's like, I could have sworn you was reading to me in a brothel about a week ago. That'll be bad for her because... That would be considered embarrassing to the Shogun. So if he opens his mouth, she gonna die. Rabbit liver in a velouté of horse semen for fertility. I do hope you can handle your duties. I have a violent allergy. Oh, no. I can't even watch it even though it's animated. No. Oh! A potage from fetal. Oh, hell no. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. I'm leaving. This is torture. Protein. I mean, truthfully, I'll take the bird over the horse. No, I would have. I would have been like, y'all can take me out right here. I'm not eating that. You can take me out right now, right now. In fact, I'll do it myself. Give me that fork, cause no way. The world sees me and sees a hateful monster. But what do you see as yourself? And I am a bad artist. <laughs> Ouch. I haven't been hitting the head in a while. This gives all they have to the art, the whole. Your strengths and deficiencies. Mm -hmm. Your loves and shame. That's what he said. Always a mix. Pure and impure. I made my best blades when I had an apprentice. Hmm. I thought I annoyed you. You did. Both are true. <laughs> yep, every day is a new day to start over. Oh, beautiful lessons in this show about life and accepting yourself and recognizing that no matter how messed up your past may be, there's always room to start over and that it makes you who you are. And all that stuff she was saying about how she thinks everyone thinks she's a demon, it doesn't matter what they think, what does she think? Say something. Was it beneath you to speak to me? I'm not allowed. It was an apology. <gasps> he stutters. Oh, what that madam said is true. You'll be able to, you can control this one. You can control this one. I had a feeling he was being controlled as soon as I heard Lady Ito told him he can't talk to people. This is why. Can my husband forgive me for striking him? He is miserable. When he recited poetry, the words filled with meaning. It filled me with pride. You better play him like a violin. Would my husband recite for me? Yep. 
You better head, girl. You're going to have that man on his knees by nightfall. Mastery. She's like, I can't. things I cannot do alone. There we go. Help. Useful. I don't know if it's safe to have your bits in front of a fire like that, girl. The pure and impure mixture of the things that make it strong. No. He's helping you. His only child. Fish. Yeah, I feel like Fowler gave fake information, by the way. Pretty sure he did that to figure out that you were going to betray him. Our guns? I don't understand. Where are they? You didn't search well enough, friend. They're right here. Of course, I had to modify the designs to get 2,000 rifles from my country into yours without notice. Mm-hmm. Master mm -hmm. Chiba tried to steal my delivery. Yep. There goes your last inside man. Seems you'll have to do Chiba's job in the castle. Oh, sweet lord. Thank yeah, it's money. bad. If they're all armed with guns, yeah, Ito's going down. I must go to Edo and kill the man I am sworn to kill. If I succeed and I'm still alive, I will return. And you can determine if I am worthy of a sword of this metal. Aww. I know you were excited to be my teacher. Maybe for years. <laughs> my master needs me. He's so happy to say that. Bye, sword father. <laughs> the tone difference. <laughs> Take your belongings. Your services are no longer required. That's right. Get out, hags. But who will attend to you? I'll attend to my damn self. Or maybe women who aren't as hateful as you. So? I find myself in need of new attendants. Mm. There is opportunity here, but I have much to learn. I need friends I can trust. Friends experienced in the world. She's getting smarter. This is like the best thing that's ever happened to me. Understandable. And here's the traitor. Can she go through with it? I was awful to you. And you offer me this. Rising above. You have to leave. You're in terrible danger here. Does that? Won her over with conscience. You have to leave now. Oh God, it's one of his men, isn't Thank it? Thank you. You may have saved us all. Yeah. Including my daughter. He's one of the men. Who else knows this? No one. No one. He's about to push you over that balcony. I knew it. <laughs> He wants it to happen because he thinks he's going to get... Yep, he thinks he's going to take the seat. Allowing their power to fall to me. <laughs> Shared with my new partners. Mm -hmm. and then, you can thank me. Oh, man, how are you so different? Are you sure that's even your bio, Dad? Because, damn, y'all are so different in every possible way. Oh, that's terrible. But I mean, I guess on a good note, he's trying to protect you and he didn't decide to just take you out. I mean, I don't even know how long because if he's willing to do all that, he probably will just get rid of you. But I shouldn't be surprised. I mean, he was telling you to your face that if you didn't do what he asked you to, he was going to put you in a brothel. So tells you how much he cares when he's got his precious son. All right, guys, that was a very interesting episode seven. Um, this one to me was all about kind of starting over and remaking and deciding what's important. And we saw that, I think, the parallel between Mizu and Akemi, both finding themselves in situations that they didn't exactly plan to be in and trying to decide where to go from there, both feeling a bit defeated in the places that they're at. And with, we'll do a Kemi first because hers is quite short in comparison, but she's here, she's married to this man, she doesn't want to be, he's got a horrible reputation, but then she runs up upon Madam and Madam kind of lets her know that, hey, look, your situation isn't great, but really it's up to you to make something out of it. And she brought out some really valid points about how to interact with and kind of deal with men in situations like this. And 
Obviously, I was cackling in the episode. I know not all men are like what she's describing, but what she was talking about was very much the way that women back when the world was such that we had literally zero rights and zero ability to do anything for ourselves. Women had to learn how to operate and maneuver within the confines they're in. And as I said in the episode, Seki was trying to tell her that, like he said, the reason I let you learn how to read and why I taught you how to play Go and all these things was because I was trying to prepare you with for how to operate within the cage you're in. And remember a few episodes back, he said to her, you keep fighting against the cage rather than learning how to maneuver within the cage that you're in. And I understand her frustration in that, like the cage shouldn't be there. The cage is the problem. But while the problem exists and there's nothing you can really do directly to change it, you need to learn how to navigate within it. And this is where the madam basically gave her some more, shall we say, direct instructions on how to do that, right? Because Seki couldn't tell her that. He doesn't understand that. He's a man, right? There's only so much he can impart to her. But that's where madam was able to say, like, men are actually, can be, very easy to manipulate. And I absolutely agree with her when she said that the men that are the most abusive and aggressive and over the top are usually the weakest. They're trying to cover for that weakness that they feel. And so she can find a way to get to her man and figure out what makes him tick. Or as Seki put it, find the weaknesses in your opponent so you know where to strike. Then that's how you can take over. Like the line she said, which was great, was that if you want control over your life, get control over him. And so once she figured that out and realized that her, I guess you could call it feminine wiles were to her advantage where this was concerned, she got to work, she got to know her man. And it turns out her man is actually not what everyone said he was, right? We see that he was actually under the care of this lady Ito, his mother. And my guess is that she was trying to toughen him up, but I don't think that that was the way he is. And of course we see that uh, he has a stammer or a stutter and in society, well, even now, but I even was so much more before anything that made you different was something that was often something people saw as a detriment or, or as a reason to look down on you. And because of his position in society, he was expected to be perfect. So him having this, this thing that he has that's not normal, it's, it's a problem. So his mom telling him that he's not even allowed to talk was, you know, I mean, first of all, how would that have made him feel? But again, it was just kind of a way, in, in a way to protect him because she knew that what would happen if people heard it, unfortunately, a lot of negative assumptions would likely have come with that. So anyway, we see that, you know, Kemi discovered that, realized that she could use this. And that she, I think she figured out very quickly that that was part of the reason he had this whole air and persona around him but she managed to get him to talk and actually admit the fact that he, what he was doing was to apologize and that he didn't feel good about the bird situation and that he wasn't even the one who wanted that. That was all his mother trying to teach her a lesson, put her in her place. And so Akemi picked up very quickly that he's not the tyrant that everyone thinks he is. He's just doing his best to thrive under a household that is pushing him to be this thing that he's not. And she understands that better than probably anyone. So we see that she poured on the charm, like we saw a little of that in the episode when she was in the brothel. She knows how to use her flowery words and to speak eloquently. And she of course used that thing that he was insecure about and actually complimented him on it and did her best to basically fluff and stroke the ego quite literally and figuratively <laughs> um, as far as that was concerned to get him to lower his guard towards her. And of course that was really making her way into his into his heart, into his good places, into his good graces. And so she was getting to a point where he was gonna let her do whatever she wanted to because not only did she have him sexually, as we found out eventually, but she had him mentally and emotionally. And that emotional is the big one, right? Because I don't care how intellectual you are, we are all emotional creatures as humans. What moves us, what makes us feel good, which makes us feel safe, that will always lead us over logic. Always, even if you think you're making a logical decision, your emotions will always take precedence. So she definitely had him in the pocket, palm of her hand by the, when it was all said and done. I gotta give her props for it. You do what you gotta do. And hey, it didn't hurt. He wasn't an ugly guy. And it turns out he seems to be pretty nice. So it wasn't the worst thing ever for her, to, her, for her to have to do. Obviously the biggest downside being that it's not the man she genuinely loves, that's Tygen. But at this point she has no idea where Tygen is anyways. 
for all she knows, he may not even be alive anymore. So I get why she just basically had to move on and deal with her situation and her black teeth. Don't even get me started in that meal. That meal thing was disgusting, by the way, but I have no doubt there was a lot of ancient remedies that used to exist for fertility and all that stuff that are absolutely appalling to think about now but I digress. So that happened with her. We see that later on, she also used money from her husband's riches to buy the freedom of the ladies that were there. She wanted to give them an opportunity to live a life better than what would been laid, laid out for them. Because of course, being prostitutes in that society, like they lost the one thing, sadly, I hate saying this, but the one thing they would have had that would have been considered valuable back then, which was their virtue. So outside of that, like really their only option in life would be to be a prostitute going forward. So she gave them a very rare opportunity to live at a, a job or have a job that would have been a dream job, quite frankly, for them, where they don't have to give their bodies to any and everybody anymore and they get to wear nice clothes and live in a nice place and eat good food, all those things. So that was really nice. I love that she was like, maybe I can't necessarily have my freedom the way I want, but I can at least help to empower other women in the best way that I can. And so I thought that was really great and just shows us the kind of woman that Akemi is. Like she wants to be a world changer, a game changer. If only she could be let loose, right? So that was Akemi's thing, but then we see uh, that one we knew from earlier in the episode that one of Madam's girls actually knew of all the plans that's going on with Fowler. My guess is either she's been sleeping with one of the people working with Fowler who might have a big mouth, or she met, I was gonna say maybe she was with Fowler, but I don't think any of the girls who go to Fowler ever return. So my guess is that she was probably just being possibly loosely used as either ears for this rebellion, or like I said, more likely she slept with one of Fowler's men and he has a loose, has loose lips. But anyway, we see that she was moved by the kindness that Akemi showed her despite everything. And she told her the truth to try to save her life. Akemi un understandably thought she could trust her father. Like I think she knew that her father wasn't necessarily a good man, but I don't think she ever thought that he was a traitor. I don't think she ever thought that he was un um, unpatriotic or worse, that he had no honor. But now she knows, unfortunately, that he is power hungry at all costs. And again, we very much learned that in the first episode where we were introduced to him. So now we see that the long game of this whole thing with the Shogun was because he wants to get her in there and have her positioned as the person to take over power in Edo. But of course her father is an idiot because he doesn't realize that Fowler does not want any Japanese people in power. And he certainly is not gonna want a man that was willing to betray his Shogun to get to that point. So unfortunately his daughter is not gonna make it. And that's exactly what that girl tried to tell her before Issei, before she was pushed over that ledge. Um, she tried to let her know that Fowler's gonna take all you guys out. Like he does not care about any of you, you're all going. So, I mean, for now, thankfully her dad at least cares enough about her that he doesn't want her gone. He's locked her away wherever this is. And I do think it will keep her safe for the time being, at least when the attack starts. But we all know Akemi once, if she does get out of there, she's definitely not gonna sit back and let that happen. So that was Akemi. Good to see that she's really coming into her own and her sense of self and her power. And then of course, on the other side, we have Mizu who was rescued by Ringo. I'm glad it was him. I, mean, I really couldn't think of who else it would be, but you just never know with the show. But anyway, Ringo couldn't stay away. He did show up, ended up saving both her and Tygen's life and bringing him, them back to her sword master. Brought them over there, nursed them back to health again. And when she woke up, basically, she was kind of on the same stuff that she was on before, trying to be like, yep, let's fix my sword, let me get back out there. And her sword master's like, nah, the sword is broken. Like, as it is, you're not gonna reforge the sword you had. And honestly, I don't really want to help you in this state. And she's kind of like, what do you mean? And he basically lets her know, like, this, this ball of rage, he's like, it's consuming you. Like, who you are right now, I don't recognize you. And I certainly don't want to make a sword for you. I'm not going to help you continue to be this way. And so she kind of goes off and says, like, okay, fine. Like, I know all, what to do, so I'll do it myself. And so she goes off and she tries to make her own forge and do it her own way. And she doesn't succeed. The metal won't melt, it won't melt down. It won't re-melt itself into a way that she can forge it again. And she gets super frustrated because she doesn't understand why. And she's forgetting the, the fundamentals, the principles that her master taught her years ago. One of them of which he said, he said, your sword is too pure. You need to have pure and impure. There needs to be a mixture to make the strongest sword. 
And I guess she used that special metal the last time. That was all she used to make that sword. And anyways, that was really, of course, a metaphor overall as it's been since the first time we heard it for her, right? The impure, at least what she perceives to be the impure in her, inside of her, the white, the, the blue eyes, the things that make her different, the thing that gets her all this hate and ostracism, the impurity is what makes her strong. It's part of what makes her who she is and what's forged her to be the formidable force that she is. And she has to learn to accept that. And I really love that speech that she had between her and the sword father on the edge of the cliff. And he basically says to her, like, I have to learn to accept all of you, all of it, like the good, the bad, the ugly, the scars, the beauty, but also the demon and the good. Like, yeah, you might have a demon in you, but that's not all that's there. Like you have to accept all of you, including the fact that you're half white. <laughs> like it's something that is a part of you. You can never change that about yourself. And, you know, hating yourself for it or hating that part of yourself or hating your father for giving it to you, none of this is going to help you and it's not gonna change it. So learning to accept it and embrace it, that's what's most important. And I love that expression he used along the lines of like, if you keep acting or, you know, rejecting it, you're giving the demon two seats, right? He's like basically saying, you're, you're just letting it take over. Like you can have this darkness. You always will. Like her past experiences, what she's gone through, what she's still going through. It's going to, there's going to be a darkness in her that will never really fully be gone, but it doesn't have to be all. And she doesn't have to let it consume her because if that happens, then she really is the demon, right? So I just really love that speech. Again, they have a lot of great bars in this show. It's written really well and the line delivery is always A+. Plus. And yeah, I just really love that, again, that lesson that's just there for all of us because we are all a mixture of quote unquote pure and unpure. We all have good and bad about us. And no matter how bad your history might be, no matter what you've been through, no matter what darkness that might be there, it doesn't mean there isn't, that, that ha it doesn't have to be all of you, I guess is the point. Like that... It forges you, it does shape who you are, but you get to decide who you are going forward. And then that was that other expression that the sword father gave about how every morning I wake up and I start over, I start a fire, I start brand new because that's what I do. And again, the message being no matter what's happened in the past, which we can't change, every day is a new day to start and start over and do better or change or set yourself on a new path or reforge. And that's exactly what we saw Mizu end up doing. She recognized she had to reforge. She had to shame, change herself because this walking ball of rage wasn't working for her anymore. And she didn't want to be that way. Like it worked for a while. It was kind of who she had to be for a while. But now she's met people like Ringo. She does care about Ringo. She doesn't want to hurt Ringo. You could tell she was very guilty about how she hurt him and how she made him feel. She cares about Tygen. She doesn't want to hurt Tygen. She cared about Akemi. She felt guilty about Akemi. So this, like I said, the, the person she tried to be when she left, um, when she left the, the brothel and that whole situation, that's not who she wants to be anymore. And so she needs to reforge and figure out who she wants to be going forward and what that means. And so we saw a lot of that symbolism with her in front of the forge, you know, naked, quite literally taking off all the shielding, taking off all the barriers, including the binding that even hides who she really is and just letting it all burn away and starting over. Um, I'm not sure. I'm still trying to figure out the meanings behind the sutras. I should do a little research into what those are. But again, I think she's just trying to take new tenets to heart. And like I said, just reform who she is so that she can be a better version of herself going forward. And as we saw later on, when she brought the metal that she'd managed to finally melt down after adding some other things, other impurities to it, she said, I don't think I'm worthy of a sword yet made by you, made by this sword, made by this metal, but I want to go do what I have to do. And when I come back, I can actually be the samurai, the true samurai that embodies the things that would be honorable enough to wield this sword. Because right now what I'm about to do, not so honorable, <laughs> right? And now she knows she doesn't necessarily need that sword. She will need a weapon, but as Tygen brought out earlier in the episode, he did tell her she doesn't need a sword. She is a lethal weapon in, a, in of herself. She is a lethal, lethal weapon and we saw that. She fought without a sword several times in the last episode. She is deadly, even her bare hands. So now she knows that and she just knows she wants to finish up this plot because of obviously the bigger picture of what Fowler is planning to do. 
And of course that came after, because she wasn't going to do it. She wanted to take out Fowler and again for revenge. But after Tygen came for her finally and told her that, you know, it was dishonorable of her, dishonorable of her not only to let Akemi be taken back to her father and married to a horrible man, but because she knows Fowler's plot and didn't warn the Shogun. And so that of course is going into patriotism and overall honor and he wasn't wrong, but Again, before I say episode one, Mizu wouldn't have cared about that, but she does care now because she does care about what Tygen thinks as well. And there was even a little moment there. I kind of didn't talk about it. Her and Tygen tussling. He decided to do a little hand tussling with her. And uh, we, like I said, we already knew from a while ago that Tygen has respect for Mizu. And again, Tygen is still very much under the impression that Mizu is a man, but there is energy there. There is energy and a lot of that is coming from Mizu's side, I think, because obviously Mizu is the only one who knows the full truth between the two of them. But yeah, we saw that during the tussling, during the tussling, there was a moment, there was some eye contact, there was some energy, and uh, my man was feeling it. Tygen was feeling it, and he doesn't know why he's feeling it. <laughs> to our knowledge, Tygen has only been with women, so I think he's very confused right now. <laughs> but hey, who knows? Maybe he thinks he's just turning over a new leaf in his life. He doesn't know. But anyway, there is some stuff there and I've been calling it for a while. Ever since they had that little rolling around thing that they went through a few episodes back, I was like, oh, okay, this is where we're going. But anyways, Tygen is definitely on a bit of a redemption arc from what we saw in the beginning. And he's definitely shown more sides to himself, including his formidability, his stubborn spirit as the sword father called it. And also that he does have a deep set sense of honor and I, he really genuinely cares about Akemi. I wasn't sure about that back in episode one, but he does care about her. So he's on his way right now to try to warn the Shogunate, but he is by himself and he's gonna need help. Like he's damn good, but we all know that Mizu is better and he's gonna need help. So whew, a lot in this episode, more of a poetical deep episode than anything else. But I think it was a nice break after all the action that we had. And I have no doubt that in the season finale, which is the next one, I can't believe it already, it's going to be a lot of chaos. So I'm glad we had a little bit of time to digest and take in some more story before we jump into that. So yeah, another phenomenal episode. Really, really good, enjoyed it. Hope you guys enjoyed watching with me. If you did, please show some love to this video and I'll see you in the next one.